okay. <laughs>
Hey, um, welcome and happy new year and welcome to the first webinar of the year. We're just giving everyone a few minutes um, to join and we'll start in a few minutes. Hey, um, and welcome and Happy New Year, first of all. And uh, we hope you all had a great Christmas break and a good start into the new year. And welcome back to the first webinar of the year. Um, today, we're kicking off uh, with a session on transforming text and media into interactive visualizations. And uh, today's host is Simona and I'm Vanessa. And first of all, like just a few housekeeping rules. Um, as always, ask questions through the chat. Um, if you need more information, go to our webinar page where you can also see the upcoming webinars. Um, and you can also sign up to get email notifications so you're always up to date. And after the webinar, you have a chance to fill out our survey and share your feedback with us. And yeah, now over to Simona. And if you have any questions, just ask them in the chat. Hi, everyone. Uh, Happy New Year for me as well. I hope everybody had an amazing start of 2024. I personally can't believe that I am saying that we are in 2024. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure a lot of you uh, can not believe this also. Um, but it's amazing to see so many of you here today. Um, and I'm really excited that um, hopefully all of us can learn something new together today and kick off the new year with some fresh new knowledge. Um, today's session is all about about uh, visualizing qualitative data. Um, this is essentially text, images, videos, um, any multimedia that cannot be expressed by numbers. Um, and so we're going to actually dive a little bit deep into qualitative data and what do we mean by um, visualizing um, text images with Flourish. Um, we're going to talk about uh, our content-based template. Uh, this is how we call basically any template that uh, can help you visualize this type of data. Um, we're going to dive a little bit deep into how you can do a couple of things with Flourish, and we're going to finish with some help and resources. Um, but before I kind of like dive um, into this topic a little bit further, I just want to kind of emphasize that today's webinar would be a bit more uh, Flourish specific as opposed to some of our previous webinars. If you've um, if you are not joining us for the first time, you might know that like we sometimes tend to focus on a little bit more data visualization theory. Today, actually, we wanted to give a little bit of a refresher of how Flourish works um, or introduce Flourish to people who might um, not have worked with it before. Um, and you're going to see that actually for those of you who might have not seen those templates before, um, this is actually a great overview of Flourish because some of them are actually really, really easy to get started with because they don't have a data tab. <laughs> you're going to see how this kind of magic works in a second. Um, but, oh. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. So diving straight in because we have a lot to cover. Um, I hope 
today is not too overwhelming. Um, I'm going to be showcasing lots of different templates. Uh, but um, if you kind of like are stressing out that you need to take notes or things like that, don't worry, because of course this session is recorded and uh, you will receive a recording in your inboxes if you have signed up for our webinar mailing list or you're going to find it on YouTube in the next few days. So don't worry about this. <laughs> and before I kind of um, give an answer to uh, what are content-based templates, I would actually like to ask you a different question, <laughs> which is what do you think about when you think about data? Some of you might actually think about large spreadsheets filled with numbers and stats and all sorts of things, um, basically in this format. Or others uh, might actually think about the final result of the data visualization process. So in essence, that could be like a line chart or a pie chart or an area graph, et cetera, et cetera. Um, some of you might actually even think about something completely different, such as biometric data, uh, which is also a type of data. But today we're not here to talk about biometric data. We're actually here to talk about qualitative data. And as I mentioned, uh, qualitative data is obviously any sort of data that cannot be visualized with numbers. Um, this can be text, this can be images, audio, video, and you can collect qualitative data in multiple different ways. For example, you can do like text-based research, you can do open survey questions, you can do audio interviews, video interviews, all sorts of things. And um, usually this is an overlooked aspect of data when it comes to data visualization, because most of us really do kind of like think that when it comes to data visualization, you obviously need to have some numbers to visualize, but that not might be the case. So for example, here on the screen, we have a timeline visualization that basically shows different art movements, um, Western art movements over time. And you can see we have a lot of text, but also um, we have some background images. We have some interaction. We can actually like scroll left and right on those timeline uh, visualization. And um, this is a very good kind of like way to present content that might otherwise be a little bit just too repetitive or uh, monotone. And it can be a little bit boring for the reader. So imagine this kind of like I'm writing an article, for example, about art movements, and I just have a listicle with how much, I don't know, 500 words or something, it will be a little bit more kind of like maybe boring uh, as opposed to having a timeline visualization. And um, in most cases, when we're working with data, we do have both types of data, uh, both quantitative data, which obviously um, covers numbers and qualitative data. So for example, let's say that you're working on a scatter plot and you need to create a scatter about GDP per country. The quantitative data from your spreadsheet will be all the numbers that you're visualizing, so the GDP, and the qualitative data will obviously be the country names. So, or for example, if you have a separate category about continents, this can also be part of the qualitative data. And when we're having both types, this doesn't necessarily uh, pose any significant data visualization challenge, because obviously our goal is to tell a story with the numbers. The real challenge, in my opinion, comes when we're only working with qualitative data. And today, this is all about how we visualize only qualitative data. Of course, you can always kind of go further and try to make numbers out of your qualitative uh, analysis and research, but we're not focusing on this today. We're just showing you how you can take your text images, multimedia, and take it a step further with Flourish templates. And speaking of Flourish templates, here is a little sneak peek of what you can see today. Basically, these are some of our uh, snapshots from some of the things that you can create with Flourish. Um, and what we call content-based templates here internally is basically templates that can be used without numbers. Um, you know that obviously if you want to create a line chart or an area chart, you obviously need some sort of like a numerical column. Uh, but with those kind of content-based templates, you don't necessarily need these numbers. Um, and um, I know that content usually can also include numbers, but for a lack of better term, we call them content-based templates. 
Um, and here are just a couple. Um, today, um, obviously, we wouldn't have the time to focus on every single one because um, I might keep you here for like two, three, five hours. Um, so we're just going to focus on a few of those. But um, actually, we have a blog post coming uh, tomorrow about exactly the same topic where each of those templates that you're going to be seeing in a second is actually kind of like dive deeper into. So stay tuned. Uh, but what we will cover actually is the cards template, which is what you can see here on the left. Um, this is a great um, template uh, that's basically used to display blocks of content with different uh, information, such as text, um, descriptions, uh, multimedia content, anything you want. We have a photo slider, which is a very cool and interactive way to compare two images. And it's very good for before and after scenarios. Um, we have the timeline template that you basically saw uh, just a few seconds ago. A few more. We have a word cloud, again, a very popular data visualization type, uh, which uses uh, scaled text to represent values associated with specific words. Although you should take it with a pinch of salt, we have we're, we're going to talk about this <laughs> in a second. We, um, we're going to cover the number ticker and countdown templates, which are basically a very good way to kind of like hype up your audience about an upcoming event. Um, the interactive SVG template that essentially makes your SVG illustrations clickable and interactive, which is also really amazing. Um, and those are the three templates that you, we wouldn't be able to cover today because, as I said, that's a lot of information and it might become a little bit uh, too overwhelming. But just in case you're interested, uh, we also have a text annotator template that basically allows you to um, highlight a specific part of your any text and click on it so people can see more information just as a annotation on a piece of paper. Um, you can create quizzes with Flourish, so you can test your um, reader's knowledge on any topic you, you want. And we have a 3D model viewer template. Um, this is um, an amazing, very, very good template, uh, but obviously um, that basically just allows you to kind of display 3D scenes. And it's really good, for example, if you are um, launching a new product and you would like to kind of create an interactive visualization about um, the product itself, like 360, where people can rotate and play around with it. This is really good. But of course, you actually need to sort your 3D models out outside of Flourish because Flourish basically essentially just allows you to kind of create visualizations with it and uh, create stories, but obviously it's uh, it's not a 3D model creator tool. Um, so this is kind of the templates that we will be covering today. And without further ado, oh, sorry, I forgot about this slide. Just to sum up, basically with all these templates, as I mentioned, you can, of course, visualize non-numerical data, but the reason why I personally love these templates so much is because they can essentially make any piece of content interactive. And as any Flourish template, they're also embeddable anywhere. So you can upload them on your website or you can embed them in your slide decks or you can create assets for social media, et cetera, make videos. Um, you can um, also provide a deeper emotional response with the reader as opposed to just having pieces of text, uh, which are very kind of like glanceable. There is nothing that can, uh, you know, like make the user to stick around for a second. And very similar to my previous point, obviously, this creates a bit of more memorable experience for the user that actually drives engagement and shares. Um, Starting straight away with my absolutely favorite template, the cards. Um, not sure if you have seen this before, maybe some Power Flourish users have seen this template, but this is, as I mentioned a couple of seconds uh, ago, ideal for displaying blocks of content with descriptions, information, multimedia content like videos, GIFs, and even audio. Um, and as you can see here, uh, on the right, you can see an example of our um, of a card's visualization that I created uh, a few months ago for a blog post. Basically, um, this is more of like a um, sum up section, uh, which I created with a cards template instead of creating a listicle on, on the blog um, to make things just a little bit more engaging and interactive. And uh, when I hover over each card, basically you can see more information about, in this case, why PDFs might not be great for data visualization. Um, but you can create all sorts of crazy things with uh, the cards template. And this is why I like it so much. 
Um, and if I can summarize the purpose of this cards template um, in kind of two points, the first one would obviously be that it can display any multimedia content in an interactive way. So what you see here, for example, is a cards visualization um, that auto plays um, about the different mascots of the Winter Olympics uh, all throughout the years. And you can see that uh, when I hover over a particular card, the, the, like the auto playing stops. But if I I uh, hover out of the visualization, uh, you have some cool kind of animation that basically just attracts the user attention. Um, and we have images, uh, obviously, some and some text. But the second purpose of the cards template, and um, a little bit more hacky, I would say, is that it actually streamlines the web design process. Um, and what I mean by this is that um, I, for example, am a content specialist. I can do some very basic HTML and CSS, but I personally don't know how to code and therefore I don't know how to make things um, on a website, for example. So in some cases, when I need something like a content gallery or some specific CTA buttons and all sorts of things, um, instead of me trying to create things on a page from scratch or um, ask a developer to help me, I can actually make all these kind of things with a cards visualization and simply embed the visualization on my website. Um, and um, if you've ever um, read a blog post, for example, in Flourish uh, and scrolled all the way to the bottom, you might have seen this uh, part, which is basically a section with related articles that you might be interested in. And this is a cards visualization. Um, in a similar way, um, I can show you here, for example, in our webinar page uh, in Flourish, we have uh, this section here that basically showcases previous webinars. And you can scroll again, like very similar way, left and right to basically check uh, previous webinars. And imagine if me without extensive kind of like coding knowledge, how would I create a cards visualization or a similar content gallery that also has a filter in it uh, where I can kind of like make them uh, resize on mobile? How could I customize my slider? All sorts of things. It For me, it personally will be impossible with the current knowledge I have. But the cards template luckily makes everything possible. Um, and um, I think the best way for, for you to kind of see the process is to actually go into the Flourish editor and see how this works. Um, so this is exactly what I'll do. Um, basically, we are just going to the Flourish um, template page and I'll click a new visualization. And I'll scroll throughout our multiple hundreds of starting points until I reach my cards uh, template. Um, here we, you can see that with basically any Flourish template, we have different starting points. Um, but whether you choose a carousel mode and then you decide to swap to a grid or something like this, you can absolutely do this yourself within the settings. Um, these starting points are more like a help for you to kind of like get started, especially if you are very, very certain what do you need. Um, it just like speeds up the process a little bit. Um, but for the sake of my tutorial, I actually will just choose any. I'll choose the carousel. And as you can see here, we already have a cards visualization that basically shows uh, different street markets in London. And if I click on any card, I can also open up a panel and see additional information. And within the Flourish editor, you can actually very quickly choose between the two view modes, uh, which is essentially our starting points, which is the grid mode and the carousel mode. The carousel mode is what we are seeing here, obviously sliding left and right, whereas the grid mode actually creates what it says. It creates a grid and basically kind of... Um, yeah, um, contains all the information that you have within, like it expands the visualization in height as opposed to in width, and it doesn't have a slider. And to add my data, what I can do is I can just go to my data tab here. And uh, you can see that we already have uh, some sort of uh, starting points, but I don't need this actually. What I'll do is I'll just clear my sheet and I'll go here to upload data. So I can choose the uh, CSV file that I'll be working with, which is sounds from around the world. And why I have selected this visualization uh, in particular is because uh, apart from many other things, the 
Cards visual, the cards template can also support audio files, um, which is very handy, especially if you, let's say, want to kind of embed different uh, audio files from different podcasts, or if you are creating your own kind of like personal music library or all sorts of things. Essentially, what you can do is uh, all you need is an MP3 file from your uh, computer. And what you can do is uh, you can literally click on a um, empty cell within Flourish and click upload file. Uh, this will open your local files and the uh, local folders, and you can choose an MP3 file from there, which will essentially generate this type of link. But I've obviously, for the purpose of this tutorial, I've done this before, so we don't have to kind of bother with this. And you can see me just like going into my computer, etc. Um, and what my spreadsheet actually contains are the following things. I have a column for uh, the name of the country, which we will be showcasing audio from. Uh, I have an image um, a folder. Maybe I can even uh, try and zoom in a little bit so you can see better. I'm not sure if that worked. Yeah, um, I have an image column here, which is basically... Um, again, supports both local files. Again, like you can right click and upload a file from your computer, or you can supply a publicly available URL as we did here with uh, images from Unsplash. You can have a little bit of a description uh, and here is our audio file. And of course you can have some further information for pop-ups, all sorts of stuff. Um, so the way I will embed my audio is I'll just Go on the right here, we have an audio uh, setting where you can basically add an audio file to the card and I'll embed column D. And if I reset my window for a second, <laughs> um, if I now go back to the preview tab, you will be able to see that um, we already have like a visualization that's almost ready. Obviously it doesn't look super nice at the moment, but we can change this. What we can do is I can go under image and I can uh, deselect the black and white mode. So my visualization becomes uh, more colorful and each image basically pops up. Um, and um, the way the audio works is I can literally just click on a card and you will be able to hear the audio. Um, the only thing uh, is I am not sure if I'm actually sharing uh, my screen with audio at the moment. So you might actually not hear anything. <laughs> um, I am really not sure if you can hear anything, but you can see how my visualization kind of like my card started like playing and dancing, which indicates uh, that an audio is being played. And um, of course you can kind of um, do different things with the audio. Like you can choose to disable the animation if you don't want it. You can choose uh, what the click actually does, whether it stops, replace, pauses it, all sorts of stuff. But here is a very simple way for you to actually do an audio gallery. Um, and of course, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because this personal preference and everybody can do this, but by exploring all the different settings, you can actually adjust the text. So let's say I would like my uh, header to be black. Um, I can uh, choose my subtitle to be a different color. If I have added the text for a column, I can adjust the settings of all of those things. And um, another thing I can do also is I can decide whether I want the um, aspect ratio of my image to be like 145 or I can make it one to make it a little bit more square um, and, and so on and so on. <laughs> Um, but actually one last thing that I would like to show you is the, um, the hacky part of the cards, uh, template, which is a little bit more advanced than just adding, um, you know, your data and customizing the look and feel of your visualization. It's, um, the setting that actually allows us to make all these kind of like web things, um, on our websites or slide decks or anything you want, which is this advanced setting uh, called Customize Card HTML. And if I click on it, you will see that everything from my cards visualization actually disappeared. The only thing that's left is being the layout here. Uh, and this is because um, this setting here allows me to essentially just completely customize uh, my cards visualization with custom HTML and CSS. Um, and you will notice that um, in some divs here, for example, we have those little curly brackets called column underscore name. And the reason why nothing is popping up in my cards visualization at the moment is because in my data tab, I don't have a column called column name. 
So in order for me to change this and make things actually display on the page, what I can do is I can literally go to my data. And for example, I can copy and paste the uh, header of my column A, which displays the name. And I want this as my title. So I'll just replace the, the first header here with name. And if I zoom out, you will see that now my title appears. Uh, you can continue doing this with like column uh, with the second headers, with the third headers. And this is where you can also apply styling. Um, and you can do anything and everything. So the first example that we saw with the cards on and how they flip on hover, you can do this by creating um, your HTML and CSS code here directly within the editor. If you would like to do cards that uh, basically have a collapsible section, you can do this. And I'm saying, yeah, you can do this, but if you don't know any HTML or CSS, don't worry, we've actually thought about this. And in fact, we uh, have help docs that basically show you all the crazy hacky things that you can do with the cards template. So for example, in this doc, which is about adding a collapsible section with custom HTML, you have this, um, more information kind of like drop down menu here where like if you click on it uh obviously more information displays um and all you need to do um in order to create something similar is basically going to um follow our steps and literally just copying and pasting the code within the advanced uh, html section here and once you copy and paste it you can obviously adjust the colors you can adjust like uh, a little bit the customization but essentially the functionality of the cards will remain uh the same so hopefully this is a good enough of an overview of the cards template um but if it isn't I have a customer example, so you can actually see what some of our users do with this template and create absolutely stunning pieces of content. Um, this is an article created by Continentalist, which is a newsroom based in Singapore. And um, if I open the, uh, I might actually open the story straight in the editor, so in my browser so you can see it a little bit better but basically they've created a very beautiful piece of um uh, about the sarong and about traditional clothing in different parts of the world and they have essentially made their whole story using the cards template here for example um this is this is cards they've embedded images they've customized it to kind of fit their branding and for example when i actually click on a card you can see that the panel displays with additional information they've created these super cute icons and embedded it in a panel and um this is essentially a great piece of information which otherwise i might actually just not pay attention to and uh, i might not it may not have the same effect if it was just like um different parts of an article and things like that. Um, so this is all about the cards template. Um, before I move on with the photo slider, which I promise is not complicated at all, you'll see. <laughs> um, I'm just going to step for a second and um, ask Vanessa if we have some questions in the chat that I can maybe reply uh, live. Uh, I think for now, all good. Thank you. OK, cool. All righty. Um, in this case, I move on straight away with our next template, which is the photo slider. Um, probably all of you have seen a photo slider out there in the wild. I personally know that I've seen a lot, especially in BuzzFeed. <laughs> um, but this is a great uh, way to compare two images. And um, it's also extremely easy to create with Flourish. Uh, I'll just make a full screen. And um, the, ba the very basics of the photo slider templates are essentially, these are the modes. We have three different modes of um, op operation. Um, the first one is a sliding mode, which allows you to compare the image on the left and on the right by sliding uh, the little kind of like widget here in the middle. Then we have a fading option, which basically kind of morphs both images together uh, by sliding left or right, um, as you can see here. And the third option is a spotlight mode, where basically I can just hover over um, the image and see kind of the underlying image uh, behind it by like with my little spotlight thing. And this is really good when it comes to a story. For example, like you can, um, if you add this to a Flourish story, um, you can kind of set the position of the spotlight and it will kind of automatically animate between the different slides. So this is really cool. 
Um, and uh, the way the photo slider works is like very much, much simpler than the cards, because as I mentioned, um, this is one of the templates that don't actually have a data tab. So I'll do exactly the same thing as I um, as I did with my cards. I'm heading back to the template chooser and um, I can just choose a photo slider. So I'll choose a fader option here from our starting points. And here is it. Um, you can see that we have like um, the fading option enabled. We have the slide. You, we have the spotlight. Like you can you can very quickly adjust it. But the cool thing um, about this is that because the data tab is actually blocked, I cannot click on it. Um, everything that you need uh, to create a photo slider and just embed it um, is these two settings. You need to provide one photo for the right and one photo for the left. And that's basically it. Then, of course, you can customize the, the look of your slider, but this is it. You only need two settings. And in a similar way to the cards visualization, uh, what you can do is like you can provide a publicly available URL link. So you can link to an image online, or you can actually upload a picture from your computer, uh, which is what I'll do. I'll actually upload um, a winter picture because I want to compare the same road kind of like in the winter and in the summer. And this is my winter picture. And then I'll upload my summer picture. And you can see that here we have it, some sort of like a photo slider, but something is wrong. And what is wrong in this particular instance is that uh, my pictures are not the same width and the same height. So if there is one thing that you need to kind of like be careful uh, when it comes to this specific template is to avoid this kind of like disappointment, I guess. Um, you just need to make sure that your your images are actually the same dimensions to achieve this kind of like seamless before and after result. Um, and you can do this very quickly with uh, any video editing tool. You can crop it on your own computer or you can actually use Canva to do so. So for example, here I can upload my uh, two images again. And um, I have opened um, a presentation uh, file in Canva, but you can open any dimension uh, you like. The only thing that matters is actually for both images to be the same size. And all I do is basically I can literally just like drag and drop to ensure that both images have the same 16 by 9 uh, aspect ratio. Um, and I can do this the same here. I can, in fact, even like maybe enlarge this a little bit. So, for example, like even the road kind of like is a bit more smoother, I guess. Like, yeah. And once I'm done with this, which obviously takes just a few seconds, I can then share and download my images. Um, I have done this already, so I'll demonstrate what happens with the final result, uh, which is, again, my winter picture. That's essentially the same width. And then my summer picture here, like so, and voila. Basically, now we have a visualization that works much better. And you can see that like the same road in both seasons is looking equally as good. <laughs> um, but yeah, and of course, like you can choose anything, uh, any of the, the visualization modes. Um, one last thing I would like to show you about the photo slider template is basically um, a thing. So especially with the fading mode, for example, um, if you actually um, have a photo slider standalone visualization like this one, even if I would like to start furthest on the left with my slider, if I actually refresh this page, the initial position of the fader would again be in the middle. Um, but in order for me to fix this, I can, once I'm done with my photo slider, I can literally click on create a story. Um, I can uh, set the position in which I want my photo slider. And then um, I can actually hide the navigation style, this banner here in the beginning, um, so it doesn't display. And here is it. This is what we call a single slide story. Uh, and it's very useful in uh, certain circumstances, especially like in cases like this one, where I want to make something like saved um, as an initial starting point. So now if I refresh my page, you can see that the fader has stayed where I've put it previously. Um, and that's about it, about the photo slider. Obviously, like what makes the story so good and amazing is your image. And um, 
we have seen uh, multiple newsrooms actually using the photo slider again, like especially for a before and after scenario. Uh, this is just a slide with the pro diffs that we actually covered uh, a couple of seconds ago, obviously with the same size images, uh, the spotlight story, uh, which you can see in our blog tomorrow, uh, and the single slide story that I've just uh, showcased. Uh, but moving on back to like uh, customer examples and what our users do with Flourish. Um, uh, here is, for example, one piece of content made by the Czech newsroom ct 24 um, Hopefully I'm pronouncing this correctly, but basically they made it um, even more stunning. Uh, what they've actually created is a marker map, which has pop-ups, custom pop-ups in which a photo slider is embedded, um, which makes it such an amazing piece of content really, because when I hover over the pop-up, I can, for example, just go to the photo slider and see how a particular section of the dam that was recently kind of like broken in Ukraine is actually um, used to look before and is looking now. And this is a really cool way to embed multiple photo sliders or even kind of like make, make them uh, a, as a contribution to your um, overarching story. Um, so you don't necessarily always have to use any of those templates on their own. Of course, you can make them like that. You can embed visualization in pop-ups and do something equally as good. Um, so I think this is all about the photo slider. And now we're moving to the interactive SVG. Um, this is a template that we recently launched um, and it's super good. It's amazing. It's very, very nice. And what it does actually <laughs> is that it transforms static illustrations um, static SVG illustrations into interactive diagrams that can actually be clicked and um, interacted with. You can add additional pop-ups, all sorts of stuff. Um, and how does this template actually do this is by essentially making um, using specific elements from your SVG um, into interactive pieces of content. Um, and for example, um, if we take, if we just focus on the SVG illustration on the left, you can see that it's fine. This is just a static illustration. But one thing that we notice quite often when it comes to um, infographics and like static illustrations in general, especially diagrams like this one, is that it can become a little bit crowded and just a little bit overwhelming because you have a lot of of text, you have a lot of colors, just essentially a lot of going on. And in the SVG, the interactive SVG template is a great way for you to kind of essentially declutter your illustration um, instead of having to kind of like crowd everything uh, within the same file. What you can do is you can make an interactive SVG that basically like allows users to click and focus at one piece of your SVG at a time, uh, which makes it much more digestible and useful for the user. Um, and uh, similarly to the photo slider, I think what makes the SVG so powerful and interactive is that it's very flexible and very customizable, um, but essentially um, your illustration and your graphic is what makes it so special. And uh, I feel that there is no better way for me to showcase this template and how exactly it works and what does it do exactly than again by showing you a customer example. Um, and we've selected two. Um, the first one is um, this piece of content created by Munich Ray, and um, they have created a very uh, cute piece um, of their um, illustration of how they basically approach like about their portfolio management approach. And this is kind of like some sort of a funnel in which when you click on it, you display, you get um, shown additional information. Um, and you can, in that way, you can actually, you know, um, focus on each section of this funnel in a much, much kind of like deeper and uh, more engaging and interesting way. Um, because in my opinion, I personally don't find any um, different way, like better way. I can't think of any better way to visualize um, this type of information than having, first of all, an illustration and second of all, like uh, something that's a bit more engaging and clickable. And this is a really, really good example of visualizing qualitative data, in my opinion. Um, and the second thing, um, the second example that we have today 
is um, uh, equally as good. Um, it's created by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, um, where they've created a very um, a very interesting article about the online opportunities and threats uh, for displaced Ukrainians and uh, Ukrainian refugees. Um, and it's a very good piece of uh, content where um, here, uh, as you scroll, you can actually see this phone. And this phone um, is an SVG graphic that they have created and they've added to our interactive SVG template. Um, and what they've done is they utilized the pop-ups of the SVG interactive SVG template in a super creative way. For example, here, um, once I click on a particular app, so to say, you get open a, a panel where you can see more information. Um, and if I open another app, I see different uh, different information. And it's just absolutely so creative and very nice way to present information. First of all, that fits um, your branding style and branding guidelines. But second of all, it's like super um, engaging and interactive. Um, so if you um, have a designer team, or for example, you yourself are creating uh, a lot of static illustrations. Obviously these illustrations as similarly to the 3D viewer template and uh, any other piece of image or content has to be created outside of Flourish. Um, but if you have an amazing piece of um, illustration and you would like to take it a step further, you can always use the interactive SVG template and create similarly uh, good looking uh, graphics. Um, the SVG template um, obviously supports only SVG files. This is important to know. And uh, without going into too much details, um, all you need is kind of like the ID attributes of each particular element to make it clickable. But um, if you're interested, you can read a help doc uh, about this a little bit. Um, I'm sure Vanessa will, will share. Uh, oh, I forgot our last example, actually. There is one more. This is one thing that um, we at Flourish created. Um, this is another yeah, great uh, piece of SVG. Basically, we went to a conference a few uh, years ago, and we just uh, took the blueprint from the conference space um, and made it a bit more interactive and engaging uh, with also showing a little bit of more information about um, all the kind of like am amenities people could find um, in the space. So this is also really good. Let's say that you have like um, you're uh, having an office reopening or anything like that. You can always create like take the floor plan and just make uh, make it interactive and more engaging for your internal team. Um, I think, yeah. Um, before we continue, uh, again, I'm just stopping for a second. Uh, is there any uh, questions that have not been replied yet? Uh, no, same. All good to do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on with yet another two, actually, templates, the number ticker and countdown. Uh, those are essentially two different templates, but they're like um, really similar in the way they're like working and uh, you can uh, create them. Um, the number ticker and countdown uh, basically are just very good way to make your audience a little bit more engaged and just um, kind of like a bit more excited about an upcoming event, um, whether that's like a, a launch of something, of a new product, of a new brand, etc. whether it's something even more kind of like serious, such as, for example, presidential elections or any sort of elections and um, sports events, etc. Oh, I think I missed a slide. Yeah, no. Yeah, you can you can customize the countdown in a very, very easy way. I'm going to show you in a second. This is a countdown. And alternatively, if you actually need something that counts up from a particular event, you can choose the number ticker. So this is a slide that if you've joined our previous webinar, you most probably see, uh, have seen, but this is basically a um, number ticker that showcases how many visualizations, how many users, and how many uh, views um, all Flourish creations have uh, summed up <laughs> in the past 12 months. And uh, for me personally, this is an amazing kind of uh, opening slide to your presentations. Very fun way to pre present kind of like reports um, and numbers um, in a way that's like just a little bit more engaging and fun. And the way the countdown and number ticker are working 
is extremely easy because those two templates also don't have a data tab. Um, so for example, um, I can quickly go and show you um, the template, one of them is at the very bottom. So for example, here you have a number ticker or alternatively, I'm actually even going to show you the countdown template um, because here, um, one of our starting point is a countdown with image where if you, let's say, would like to recreate this visualization, but uh, instead of like counting to the Olympics, you can count to something like um, that, yeah, a personal event or anything like this. Um, all you need to do is go here under content and um, you can see that we, again, are using a little bit of a basic HTML um, and we're linking to a Wikimedia Commons image. All you need to do is basically delete this URL link and upload, supply your own image. Um, and that's that's it. That's literally everything that you can do. And if you uh, would like to just have a countdown, for example, um, we um, I can surely imagine, for example, uh, just a very simple countdown on a homepage that specifies something um, upcoming recently. All you need to, you can literally even do just an automated mode here for the date and time and don't even have additional text or images. Um, and uh, again, as always, this is a really good way to create a countdown because um, as any other Flourish template, these are um, responsive on both mobile and desktop. So um, the user experience will be seamless on any device. Um, and um, just to quickly wrap up for the number ticker as well, I wanted to show you um, one uh, report that we have created recently with Canva. Uh, it's the visual economy, which basically showcases how um, visuals um, affects businesses uh, across the world. And um, on one of their slides, they have also used a number ticker, which is also an amazing kind of um, interlude uh, or something a bit more engaging and visual when it comes to um, reports and um, slides, um, especially when you're having a lot of text, um, these kind of like um, balance, visual balance between something animated and engaging can really, really uh, make wonders to your audience. Um, our pre-last template for today is actually the timeline template. Uh, the timeline template alongside the interactive SVG uh, templates is part of our premium templates um, that are available to our business customers. Um, so if you would like to get access to those timeline templates and you're really, really willing to try them out, um, you can uh, get in touch with our sales team or you can check out our pricing page. Um, but the timeline template, um, again, is an extremely easy and a very fun way to visualize um, events, especially um, in a chronological order. Um, so, um, uh, for example, a timeline uh, visualization like this might be really, really cool and great uh, when it comes to kind of those explanation pieces and long form journalism articles where um, you just need something more visual to explain over a specific event or when you're like uh, kind of uh, providing an overview of something that has happened recently and are comparing it with um, things from the past. Um, and uh, the great part about the timeline is that it can uh, be created in two layouts. Uh, you can have a horizontal uh, timeline like this one, or you can have a vertical timeline, uh, which you're going to be seeing in a second, but essentially like the, the directions in you, which you can go is up and down as opposed to left and right. Um, another very cool about the timeline template is that you can also um, uh, choose whether your different events should be equally spaced or put on a time scale, as we did here, for example, um, for uh, this kind of like big block of information, we have supplied a start date and end date um, in the data tab. So this is how this is what makes it uh, longer and of course makes it really cute and fun to see. Um, and um, what else you can do with the timeline template is obviously make large chunk of text much more easily digestible. Uh, this is again, something I mentioned in the beginning of today's webinar. Um, but, um, instead of having, um, uh, just like 
a page of, with information, you can very easily make it um, a standalone interactive piece of content uh, like so by providing um, uh, background images or images within the uh, pop-ups itself. Um, as we did here, for example, here we've added GIFs within the content itself, whereas the background stays um, uh, white. Um, and um, you can do, you can even add images here in the little kind of like uh, circles. You can do anything you want, <laughs> essentially. And um, of course, customize everything color by category and so on. Um, and here is one of our last examples of the timeline template. This is a um, um, visualization that we've created for one of our blogs about Wimbledon and how many people, like one of the most viewed events in uh, the history of Wimbledon. And this is a vertical timeline. So as I mentioned here, you can see that the, the directions are actually up and down. They're not left and right. And here is another uh, way of also to display content. Like, for example, you can have this kind of banner-like um, uh, image um, that contributes to the text of your visualization. Um, and officially, our last template for today, um, this is the word cloud, probably one of the most familiar, again, uh, chart type out of all. Um, this is um, a very traditional visualization that uses text and the size of the words are kind of like representing values. Um, so for example, you can create a word cloud of how many times a specific word was mentioned in a piece of text, or you can kind of uh, create something different as, as, as we've created here, which is uh, we sized each country name uh, according to its population in 2020. Um, a good thing about the word cloud within Flourish is that you can create, um, you can color coordinate them. So here we've chosen continent, but you can, of course, uh, assign any category you wish and color them differently. And uh, if you're a business customer in Flourish, um, any visualization you create, including the, the word cloud, will kind of um, automatically apply your fonts and your branding, which is also very easy, kind of like it saves uh, a lot of tiresome work. Um, and, um, this is another example that you can, uh, see here, like, um, uh, another thing that the word cloud actually supports is pop-ups. So you can always hover over and like add additional information, um, in the pop-ups. And, uh, the reason why we highly suggest, uh, you do this when, especially when it comes to word clouds, um, is because we kind of, Although I love it or hate it, um, there is obviously a little bit of an issue with this template, especially when it's used on its own. Um, so we need to address the elephant in the room and actually go over the drawbacks of using the word cloud as well. Um, but let's let's start with the benefits first. <laughs> Um, obviously, it goes without saying that the, the word clouds are very visually attractive um, and they kind of like pique the user's interest. Um, they can be very good opener of any slide deck or presentation or a piece of content. Um, and also, of course, they're much easier to kind of like spot the essentials at a glance. Uh, so, for example, if you're, again, creating... Um, uh, word cloud with the most often used words in Romeo and Juliet, obviously a word cloud will be a great, a better representation of um, the words used as opposed to like you actually counting them manually or anything like that. Um, so, and when it comes to things like brands, uh, major teams, um, they can be very easily spotted, especially if you use the color coordination uh, appropriate properly. However, um, that being said, um, word clouds can actually be a little bit misleading. Um, and the reason for this is obviously they emphasize um, word frequency, but there are other factors that may affect how your user perceive the visualization. Um, things like word length or things like more popping colors, higher contrast col colors, they can actually have a higher effect of um, the, the user's mind. Um, and it can just give a false sense of importance uh, with your data. Um, and to kind of showcase this, for example, um, we can focus on um, the daily Snapchat, daily mail and Snapchat, for example, brands, which are um, all this word cloud is being sized on Google search volume. And as you can see here, like, first of all, the orientation, uh, I am seeing those uh, two words, those, those two brands vertically. So I cannot necessarily kind of like compare their length very well, especially considering that the daily mail starts um, higher here. Um, I also um, 
see that the Daily Mail might be slightly longer than the Snapchat one and Daily Mail is also colored in red. So it kind of makes me think, okay, maybe Daily Mail has more search volume for the last year than Snapchat. But in fact, this is not true because um, as the pop-ups say, Snapchat has 45 uh, million searches, whereas Daily Mail has 30. And this also opens up an additional can of worms, which is, okay, but what is the scaling of those words? Like, what is the difference between Facebook here and Vodafone? Um, so all these kind of things need to be taken into consideration when we're working with uh, word clouds. And um, of course, this is uh, something that we all also covered a little bit, but they're not analytically accurate. Um, and they also, um, unlike other chart types, they're um, hardly giving you kind of actionable insights in a way that other chart types would. Uh, and what I mean by this is, for example, let's say that you have an open survey uh, question. You've made a customer survey uh, to see how your um, customers feel about um, let's say you're a restaurant and you've made a, a survey about their your food. And some of your customers say that your pizza is great. Some of your customers say that the pizza is not good. Um, but if you're using word cloud as a visualization, how do you actually um, distinguish between the amount of people that said that the pizza is good and the amount of people that said that pizza is bad? Because pizza could be mentioned 35 times, but how do we kind of distinguish between uh, in which context it was mentioned? Um, so in these kind of cases, I would definitely recommend you using word clouds as kind of like a... Um, a bit of fresh air um, in your presentations and reports, for example, but with things that um, are kind of like, do not necessarily require any sort of action, especially when it comes to a business context. And here is one example from one of our internal presentations. Actually, we've had an internal retro uh, in Flourish, and this is a very cool kind of like an icebreaker visualization, which created um, all of us kind of fill these little readmes, and we say, what are some common goals that we love to work on together, um, which is obviously something that's just a fun fact. It's nothing that we kind of like take action upon. Um, and we've created this work out to kind of like see and compare how many things we have in common and we love working on together, which is, of course, things like data visualization, problem solving, um, developing, and things like that. Uh, so in these cases, I definitely don't see word clouds as problematic, but in other cases, they might be a good contribution, but they might not tell the full story on their own. Um, and... I think with that, we're actually at the end of our webinar. Um, again, fingers crossed. Hopefully that wasn't too overwhelming, but of course you have the recording so you can just like watch the relevant sections for you at a time. Um, I hope everything was useful. Um, and if you would like to read more about each template and kind of dive deep into um, the specification of and use cases of each of them, you can always check our uh, blog for resources. Uh, here I've linked everything. And uh, of course, feel free to reach out to us and to our support team if you would like uh, some additional help. But now uh, I'll just hand over to Vanessa. Thank you so much. That was really informative. Um, for like what uh, now just quickly go over what happened while we were on our Christmas break. So before Christmas, our latest blog was on the data behind the Nobel Prize. So we looked at the gender differences and age differences between the Nobel Prize winners over time. And then uh, something exciting, you can now create bump charts um, with the new stack mode settings in line by Pi. And uh, if you've been using Sankey, um, you might have always wanted to add pop-ups, which you can do now. And you can now decide if you want to um, color your nodes in Sankey by the source or the target, something that also wasn't possible before, but uh, you can do now, which is really exciting. Um, I will put the link to the blog in the chat as well. And you can always check our uh, change log for what's new, for other updates. Um, and then last but not least, uh, just our next webinar will be on the 13th of February. The topic will be revealed soon, so stay tuned. And um, you will, uh, you, if you subscribe to our mailing list, then you will be the first ones to know about February's webinar and um, also the first ones to be able to sign up. And uh, as always, uh, reach out to us and follow us on socials to, um, yeah, 
always be up to date and also find out about the webinar topic on there. So yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I don't think there are any more questions. Um, Perfect. Um, yeah, I guess maybe we can just stick around for like one, two minutes. Uh, we finished right on time. <laughs> um and uh, yeah in case there are any questions last minute questions uh feel free to ask if not we can just wrap up thank you everyone for joining um and yeah the recording will be sent in a few days and uh, you can we'll also find the slides um as well Uh, I can just see one question uh, in the Q&A section, which is, do the cards support video as well as audio? Um, yeah, they do support GIFs, um, which could animate uh, with videos. I think you can uh, add a link to the video, but I I'm, I need to double check if they can actually um, play. Um, let me just quickly see if we can, if we have a help doc uh, about the cards that play. Uh, mm -hmm. hmm. No, unfortunately, I don't think that we can, uh, that cards can actually display videos because now that I'm thinking about this as well, um, the way we kind of um, add video, YouTube videos here in, uh, um, as a CTA button is like, it can like just links to a YouTube link. Um, but it's definitely worth a try and I can definitely let you know, um, if you would like to leave any email address or anything, <laughs> happy to check for you. Oh, maybe I missed a help doc. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry if I find it. <laughs> How to, how to add videos. Okay. Uh, I think I am getting blind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, perfect. Yeah, it's based on a YouTube link as well. Great. Okay. Well, I mean, I think... Um, that's everything from us today. Um, again, hopefully everybody found this useful. Um, and I, we really hope to see you here next month. Thank you everyone for joining. See you soon. Bye.